Hello everyone, myself Rs, working as assistant professor at Department of Physics, KTHM College, Nasa. In this video, we have to going to discuss MSc second year paper three, semester three, that is the course of experimental technique in physics first. We have to cover first module signal, signal analysis and sensors. So today we have to cover subtopic of classification of sensors. So first model is the signal, signal analysis and sensors. So today we have to starting with the, our topic is the sensor classification. So sensor classification is depend on the following ways or it is categorized by the five ways. First one is the based on the quantity being measured. So sensor classified classified by the what type of quantity we have to measure. So that is the physical quantity like as a temperature, pressure, humidity, trace, strain. These are the physical quantity being measured gives the first type of sensor. Second one is the primary and secondary sensor. So that uh, type is depend on the working of your operating principle of the sensor. So it gives the second type primary and secondary sensor. Third one is the active and passive sensors. So here same as some sensors are require external power supply, some sensors are not require external power supply. So or some sensors are self generating and other not. So that is the third type of the sensor is the active and passive sensor. Next one is the analog and digital sensors. So here what type of components are used inside the sensor. So which gives the type of sensor that is the analog and digital. And last one is the sensor and inverse sensor. That is the operation of the sensor means what is the function of sensor. So it converts physical parameter into a uh, another form. So or inverse sensor, it is the another form converted into a your original form or physical quantity. So these are the physical quantity being measured by the sensor, like as a temperature, pressure, force, speed, light, gas, humidity, mechanical, electrical. Uh, radiant, chemical and magnetic. So these are the physical quantity being measured by the sensor. So that is the first type of your sensor. So starting with the first parameter is the temperature. So we have to know the various example of the uh, temperature sensor. So we have to measure the te uh, temperature by using these sensors, uh, sensors. So by using these sensors, you have to know the what is the operation behind that. So starting with first uh, example is the resistant temperature detector that is the RTD. It is an electronic device used to determine the temperature by measuring the resistance of an electrical wire. So here resistance of wire changes that determines the temperature that is the known as the RTD. Next one is the thermistor. It is a one type of register that is the thermal register. Their electrical resistance changes with temperature. So here it, resistors are changes with respect to temperature. Next one is the thermocouple. It is the two conductors are bounded together. That is the one end is the hot end. Another is the cold end. So we have to uh, get the potential difference and uh, you will get the output voltage. It is the changes with the temperature. So you can measure the temperature. So thermocouple is an electrical device consisting of two dissimilar electrical conductors forming an electrical junction. A thermocouple produces a temperature dependent voltage as a result of thermoelectric effect. This voltage can be interpreted to measure temperature. Now next 
Example is a LM35. I think everyone knows the LM35 IC. It is an integrated circuit is used to determine temperature by measuring the voltage of an electrical output. So LM35, it is the sense the uh, surrounding temperature or environment temperature given output in terms of voltage. So you can calculate the uh, temperature by using this voltage that is the lm35 next example is the ad590 it is also it is a uh, integrated circuit or ic it is also used to determine temperature of an environment or surrounding temperature by using the output current so output cur current is converted into a suitable temperature or you will get the temperature or you have to measure the temperature now next example is the bimetallic thermometer it is the types of metal are parallelly attached when it is the heated way then what will be the happen the thermal coefficient of any metal is less than other metal so bimetallic strip is the bend towards the that metal uh, which has the lower thermal coefficient it is a bimetallic strip is used to convert a temperature change into a mechanical displacement so there is displacement due to a thermal coefficient of metal next example is the gas thermometer there is a gas pressure gives the temperature or measure the temperature it is a device to measure a temperature by measuring the pressure exerted by a definite amount of gas enclosed a constant fan volume consider a closed loop you have to uh, put up the uh, gas uh, inside the vessel when we it is the heater then gas molecule speed is the increase so there is the pressure is increased then the glass vessel uh, volume is the constant so you can measure the temperature by using a gas thermometer next one vapor pressure thermometer when evaporated vapor of the liquid at pressure that depends on a temperature so when a closed loop vessel contain a liquid and when we have to heat it, that vessel so that liquid is vaporized so there is the increase of pressure so that pressure is gives the or measures the temperature next one is the liquid field thermometer when temperature changes pressure of liquid changes here the thermal expansion of liquid principle are used so there is liquid displacement are performed that is the liquid field thermometer and next one is example is the solid state temperature the sensor it is a exploiting the temperature sensitivity of doped semiconductor device such as diode and transistor. The device gives voltages that vary linearly with temperature over a specified range. Nowadays, many consumer and industries applications are used. That type of sensors are many electronic devices so it gives the advantage of because of many electronic device are operated are related with a or vary with a temperature so that solid state temperature sensor are used nowadays now second parameter is the pressure so we have to use a different type of sensors to measure a sensor pressure 
so starting with the first Gordon tube I think everyone knows the what is the function of Gordon tube so it says the pressure and use the display and use the desired output in terms of displacement the pressure sensing element is closed coil tube connected to the chamber or pipe in which pressure is to be sensed as the gauge pressure increases tube will tend to uncoil and why the a reduced gauge pressure will cause the tube to coil more tight here yeah? when pressure is increased then tube is uncoiled when it is pressure decrease then coil more tightly second example of the pressure sensor is the manometer so everyone is the know the how to manometer works so here we apply to pressure and we will get the displacement so manometer is devised to use the surface area or weight of column of liquid both measure and indicate the pressure so how much amount of displacement of liquid which gives the pressure so you took manometer it is the height of the fluid on the open side will be higher on that side when air pressure is less than gas pressure lower on the open side when the air pressure exceeds than gas pressure air pressure where air pressures is more than gas pressure then that is the manometer work third one is the diaphragm so diaphragm is also given to the displacement or deflection or that deflection converted into a electric when a diaphragm pressure gauge is a device uses a diaphragm with known pressure to the major pressure when a force applied to this area by fluid pressure the deflection of diaphragm measured and converted into a electrical form next one example is the pirani gauge pirani gauge is a sensor are commonly used for the measurement of low vacuum pressure range so these sensor rely on the heated wire with electrical resistance correlated with temperature when vacuum pressure increases convection is reduced and wire temperature rises when pressure is the increases then wire of temperature rises electrical resistance rises proportionally it is calibrated against pressure in order to provide an effective measure of the vacuum next ionization gates it is also same to measure a very low level pressure in terms of 10 raised to minus 3 to the 10 raised to minus 13 atmospheric pressure this gauge employs electrons from heated filament to ionize the gas whose pressure is to be measured then measure current flowing between two electrodes the number of ions per unit volume depends on the gas pressure and current also depend on the gas pressure so these two uh, pirani gauge and ionization gauge are typically measured the gas pressure at the very low level so next example of the pressure sensor is the thermocouple gauge the thermocouple is directly attached to the heat filament which measure filament temperature compare with ambient room temperature and gives output voltage so here 
we have to compare the uh, filament temperature and ambient room temperature and gives output voltage that output voltage is proportional to the gas pressure inside the that gauge so that is the thermocouple gauge of the pressure sensor now next parameter is the force and torque so force or in torque it is nothing but a stress and strain applied to a any object matter or material so we have to require different sensors like as a strain gauge load cells column type load cells cantilever beam so different types of load cells also we have to used so starting with a strain gauge so starting with a first example strain gauge when an external force is applied on an object due to which there is a deformation occurs in the shape of the object this deformation in the shape is both compressive or tensile is called strain it is measured by the strain gauge when the object deforms within the limit of the elasticity so it becomes shorter and longer as a result there is change in resistance end to end of the object so here when you use a strain gauge to measure a force or torque when we apply a external force on any object so they are changing their shapes so when deformation in the shape or changes in shape is both compressive and tensile so that is the called strain so we have to measure a strain when we have to become as a result the deformation so it becomes uh, somewhere is the shorter somewhere is the longer so there is change in resistance end to end of an object so you will manage the or uh, measure the force next example of force or torque is the load cell or column time or cantilever beam it converts a force compression pressure or torque into electrical signal can be measured or standardized as the force applied to the load cell increases the electrical signal changes so when we given to the maximum load or maximum force on any object so you will get the, that load cell is the maximum output signal change that is the working of load cell or operation principle of a load cell